Good Saturday morning again. It's, it's chapter five of St. Matthew. Okay, now I'll read it to you. Okay, this, this is trickier. Watch what he says here. Jesus said to his disciples, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, don't swear at all. Not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it's his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it's the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes and your no mean nor. no. Any more is from the evil one. See? Don't be bringing God down. In, it's, that's what it calls it, like a vow. I swear to you by this. I, we do this all the time. But, we, you know, we do take vows. You take marriage vows. I took vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Okay? We do take vows. We make promises. I think he, I don't know what he, our Lord was going after here in the text, in, in its context. But he's simplifying any, because what he's saying, I guess that was a, a form of oath. You swore by heaven, you swore by earth, you swore by Jerusalem and probably the, the temple in Jerusalem. See, just say yes or no. I mean it. <laughs> in some way, profoundly, you don't need, you don't need the amplification that comes from vows. Just live and I see, that's a virtue, to say what you mean and mean what you say. If you mean yes, say yes. If you mean no, say no. You don't need to do more than that. See? Live an honest life. You don't need to make all kinds of promises. You know, just be faithful to what you say and faithful to whom you say it. That's all. That's not so bad, is it? So, See, I think you need the whole fifth chapter for this because the life of virtue is so central to it. See, if you're virtuous, and you see, that means you're a truth teller. You always tell the truth, and you're always faithful, faithful to your heart's commitments. You're not a scoundrel. You're not, if you live virtuously, you're not torn apart by, by vices that are warring against your members, as the saying goes. See, your, your yes means yes, your no means no. And it doesn't mean merely cognitively or intellectually. It means existentially, factually. You live the yes, you live the no, you live it. You live your vows, you live your, your commitments, you live your love. You are faithful to your community, you're faithful to your family especially. You're faithful to whom you belong and who belong to you. I, I don't know how else to put it, see? Yeah. Don't make any false, has, you don't need, don't make false promises or whatever, but whatever promises you make, live by them. Especially for you, the listener here, and the, whoever's watching these things or listening to them, it's it primarily, is, is it, most likely, mostly the married couples, married with families, and your commitment is to your spouse and your children and your grandchildren, however, and whatever. For people like me, it's the community, it's the parish, just the people, my friends, very significantly, who God gave me. Families and friends that go back 50 years. My classmate, John O'Brien, God rest him, said one time about my Junies, June and Bill and their family, and who I'm with now, Karen and Ted and the boys, okay? She said, he said to me, Ted, they're not your friends, they're your family. That we have had such a bond of friendship, such a deep bond of friendship over 50 years. Well, when John said it was 40 years, that was 10 years ago, more, 15, okay? And you live up to it. You try to live by it, not up to it. You live, try to live by it. You try to live by the commitments you have engaged in freely, your friends, but especially your family. I guess that means so much more to me because I don't have an immediate family. I have friends. In spite of what John O'Brien said, I have friends and I have to actively... I actively sustain my friendships. I don't take them for granted. One of the enemies of marriage is familiarity. You're too comfortable in that relationship and you don't work at it. That doesn't work in friendship. Friendship, you either work at it or it dies. You take your pick. I mean it. Ask it. Think about your friends. If you don't actively stay in touch with them, actively work together with them, play together, whatever it may mean, you won't have them. 
But think about marriage and marriages and family. Sometimes you can take them not, yes, you could take them too much for granted. Now, part of that is normal because you're living a normal way of life, but there's also a call for sensitivity and awareness. You know, your spouse, your children, though you are comfortable in your relationship with them, you still need to be sensitive as well. Ask any marriage counselor in the score. You have to hear the, the loneliness in your spouse. Somebody else will if you don't. See? Marriages that aren't fail don't fail because of externals. They fail often because of insensitivity within, a lack of sensitivity, a lack of trying, a lack of being aware. And it can be the simplest thing. You know, your spouse, your wife, your husband likes a certain thing. You go out for that certain thing. You 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 give to that person in a certain way. You you. In a way, let me put it another way, you court them to some degree in a very soft way, but did you court them? You know that your wife likes to go out to dinner. Take her to dinner, see? Don't take her for granted. Don't take him for granted. Many an infidelity has occurred in the workplace. Why? Maybe, I'm thinking as a male now, I go to work every day and my my spousal life is very very routine. It's boring. It's not whatever. It's just routine. And somebody there sees me in a different way. They see me, and they encourage me in a way that makes them extremely attractive to me, because I'm in a way unknowingly lonesome. And maybe when I'm home and I say to my wife, or if I'm the woman, or my husband. You know, I'm really tired. You're tired. I, you know, now you rebuff me. Okay, maybe when I say, gee, I'm tired, and, she, and the woman at work says to me, you look really tired, Todd. You okay? See, that's magic. You see? Sometimes in life, it's the subtle things, those little subtleties that make all the difference. Are you actively faithful as opposed to negatively unfaithful? See? Yeah. I don't know. It's just a thought. But I think the virtuous life, it's just what I'm reflecting all these days, that the virtuous life is so important and practiced. It's intentionally practiced. It's good to be generous. It's good to bring home your, something special for your spouse. It's so maybe when she or he least expects it. But most of all, to hear them cry if they're lonely or they're needy. Yeah, I think that last point is probably the most important point of all. To hear the soft cry of loneliness in your spouse and your partner in life. Be sensitive to the unsaid but real. Maybe the sound of the tears. I don't know. I'm not a sentimentalist. I'm a realist. If you don't see and hear and feel your spouse is lonely enough somebody else will. That's dangerous, being honest. Very dangerous indeed. Pays to listen with the heart, not the head, with the heart. And feel your partner, your spouse's feelings. Feel the feelings. Be responsive. Listen. Listen with the heart. I mean it. You'll never be alone if you do. Never.